Boots Night Terrors. Okay. Since coming to the underground, you become a light sleeper. You are used to being the constant silence, so there is an ex- so when there is an unexpected noise, you are instantly awake. Sans is a quiet sleeper, unless he's having night time nightmares. The first time he had one, when you shed a bed, it was a minor one. He shifted in his sleep and mumbled in pain. All he had to do was say his name, and he was instantly awake, alert and disgruntled. He start, started at you tiredly, mumbling a thanks, then rolling over and went back to sleep. This happened a few more times, each one fixed by saying his name. Tonight is different. Tonight you wake up to him shivering and shuddering. You say his name, but he doesn't react. He's quiet. Not a single whimper or mutter to be heard, but it's clear he's in distress. Magic sweat beads form around his head, and his body continues to shake. You touch his face and repeat his name again. He doesn't respond. Worry gnaws at you. You get louder. You shake him gently. He doesn't react. Oh, God. Fear makes you sit up straight. You reach over to the night sun and turn the light. Nothing happens. San's face stays static. He's always stuck smiling, but you can feel his distress. Um. Goodness. Um, your heart aches. You think a ways to help him. Anxiety pricks you. Worry for your companion. Your friend makes you feel queasy. What's this one? So just dots. Hmm. I don't know what the dotty one is. Um, your heart aches as you think of ways to help him. You don't know what else to do without going to extreme lengths. What could cause more harm than good? You pick him up. He still doesn't react. And then you slide him into your lap. You tug his head under your neck and you hold him close. It's okay. You soothe him. He's okay, you tell him. He's not alone. You remind him. You're here. You reassure him. It's only a dream. You encourage him. You rock him. Your companion. As this night terror plagues his mind, he does not awake, but you do feel him relax. With each murmur, the stiffness abates away from his limbs. You won't leave him. You promise him. A blue-red light sparks in his eye socket. Then he notices you. The light widens. You suddenly feel a tight sensation in your chest and you are thrown across the room. Ow! Good lord! Ow! Right before you hit the wall, your body jerks to a halt mid-air. You and San stare at each other. You with wide eyes and he with now empty sockets. You are lowered to the floor. The magical grip inside your chest gone. You let out a slow breath. Your heart pounding in your chest. You glance behind you, curious how f- close you were to. A chill goes down your spine. The wall's covered in spiky bone. Ah. If you had hit the wall, you would have been impaled. Right, 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 he says. Not you. You're harmless. It's okay. It's okay. It's good. You're weak. The grip is back in your chest, and you are yanked back onto the bed. Sansa's eyes are still blank and devoid of light. You call out to him. The skeleton monster starts to chuckle, raspy and without mirth. Sans, he clutches at his head, a thumb going into his eye socket and pushing it around the edge. It's gone on too long, he remembers. The reset has to happen soon. I'm tired of waiting. Reach out to him, confused and scared as to what was happening. Then you hear a crack from his thumb pushing into his eye socket. Horrified, you saw yourself out and yanking his hand out of his socket. He reacts violently to your lunge. That tight grip squeezes painfully and you're thrown into the air. You almost hit the ceiling, but you are again stopped before it goes that far. Why are you still here? He asks you. You are dropped. Run, he tells you. Go away. You shake. You shakily stand up. I could kill you, he says. A lot of things could kill you. I'm the most likely thing here to to do you in, he says. Pity can only go so far. Who said you pitied him? <laughs> Why wouldn't you cry, baby? Maybe, maybe at first you allow, you start to walk back to the bed. You don't need more. Light sparks back inside his eyes on clips. He rarely watches you return to the bed. 
Forget about it, Twinkle. Don't say something you'll only regret. You beam. A good thing you won't regret this, then. You embrace Sans, pulling him into your arms. He won't hurt you. You say, well, he says. No, you won't. You won't hurt him either, for the same reason he won't. You don't know that. You squeeze him. Um... Do I want to tell him? Um... You tell Sans you love him. His arms wrap around you and he tightly grips the back of your shirt. Oh, okay, he whispers. Okay. In the morning, he decides to cook for you. Oh my. It's his way of apologizing, you know. Although the best he can manage are my grave eggs and toast. That's okay. It's the fault that counts and you understand. A few days go by without incident. I can't replicate. What? You look up from the movie you've been watching. You hit pause on it and sit up straight on the couch. Sam sits on the couch. Uh, on the couch's arm. His red and blue eyes focus on you. Your feelings, he said. Romantically, I can't replicate. Uh, you can't? Why? Um... That's okay. You can be patient. No, he says, don't. Why not? The corner of his mouth go flat. That's the closest to a frown he can make. Not interested, he said. Indefinitely? Indefinitely, he says, tilting his head. If you want, you can leave. I won't keep you here. You have no intention of leaving. Even if he doesn't care about you the same way, he's still your friend. You still care about him. He stares at you for a long minute. I can't care about you, he says. Can't? Can't, he said. So don't wait. Drop it now. But he, oh, he's afraid that it's going to all re freaking reset, doesn't he? You can't. You can't? Your peace? You shrug. You can't control how you feel. Hmm. Sam stifles his fingers together. He rests his elbows and leg and leans forward to stare at you. Science stretches on for so long, he starts to feel uncomfortable. Uh, um. Hmm. Um, okay, um, you tell Sans you don't mind that he doesn't have the same parts as a human. What? What? Sans' eyes shrink briefly, the equivalent of widening his eyes. You, you what? You found. Is that not what he was implying by can't? No, I, I can't. He starts to laugh. <laughs> you like me without knowing if I physically could do anything <laughs> about it. You pointed out he's a skeleton. You haven't seen anything other than bones. Why would I show you anything else? He reasonably points out, continuing to chuckle. Well, you, your point remains. That's just... It's <laughs> just a twinkle, he says. I can't care for you the same way you care about me. You give it some thought. You decide that's okay. Great, so we can drop. You love him. And you love yourself. So you'll love both of yourself and Sans enough for the two of you. Sans stares at you for the longest time. He's letting it shrink and widen. I just straight display of his mind posing what you're saying. I, I can't argue with that. <laughs> he says after a long moment. Great. He chuckles. Are you sure, Twinkle? Yep. He shrugs. All right, I'll follow your lead. Really? Yeah. In that case, you pat the spot beside you on the couch. He moves to sit beside you. You give him a chastity kiss on the side of his head. He seems amused by you and takes your hand. What are we watching today? He asks. His thumb absently rubbing against the back of your hand. You move to place the tab between the two of you on the ottoman. You happily tell him. You have no idea. You simply picked number one trending movie. Off what list, he asked. You don't know. It was randomly selected. 
So this could either be the greatest movie we've ever witnessed or a complete dumpster fire. He concludes. Correct. Good thing I'm fluent in trash talk. You beam. Sans tilts his head. And we can always do other stuff if the movie sucks too much. Other stuff? Merely a suggestion. Oh. Another month goes by. Spending time with Sans becomes as easy as breathing. His menace and tenacity aside, you generally love the small skeleton monster. Every day is peaceful, tranquil. You nearly completed your memorial to the monsters and in celebration that Sans tells you about them. He sets you on the couch beside him at home and then he starts to speak in that low voice of his. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried about when he talks about Papyrus. He tells you about Trial, the goat monster who lives in the ruins. She liked puns and bad jokes and she had a lovely aura to her. He tells you about Violet, the bunny monster who runs the Snowden shop. She was warm and nice and always liked to look after the children. He tells you about Grillby, the fire monster who runs the local bar. He was quiet, studious and an excellent listener. He tells you about the dog patrol in Snowden. Greater dog, lesser dog, doggo, dogmia and doggerous. Who loved to play a variation of poker with Sans. He tells you about the royal guards who would frequent Snowden and bring toys from the city to the children. He tells you about Undai, the leader of the royal guard who was passionate in everything she did. He tells you about Dr. Alphys, the royal scientist who was brilliant but constantly doubting herself. He tells you about King Asgul, the king of monsters who loved, garden, who loved gardening and was far too kind for his own good. He tells you about the resident, each resident is snow dead, and he tells about every monster you know. And then he tells you about Papyrus, his baby brother who loved puzzles and always wanted to have many friends. It's his scarf that he wears. You're crying by the end of it. Big heaping sobs of hiccups and sniffles. I am trying not to cry. He calls you a cry, but wipes away your tears with the back of his sleeve. Why are you crying? I'm not, he says. That's why you have to. Cry, baby. Teases softly. You can't help it. I know, he says. His eyelids flick away from you. I like that about you. He looks back to you and wipes away the fresh tears that are falling. You don't even know these monsters, but your grief for them anyway. I could never have that heart of yours something else. You lean forward and press your face into his chest. You curl into him. He rubs your back. Thank you, he says, for crying enough for the both of us. The next week he tells you what happened in the underground. Kara, Frisk, the resets and the constant genocide. You cried so hard that your eyes swell shut for the rest of the day. You get a migraine the following day. Sans jokes it out to be called an or a grain since the two of you lived together. Then you get a small off from you until you remember the literal hell he was put through and how likely he uses humor as a way to cope. You became clingy for the next week. Sans obligates. He always accepts your touch and cuddles and smooch you the cause. You pepper his face and kisses as often as you can that week. Not that he'll complain. He loves your affection. There are days when he won't let you leave the bed. But as with everything, you carry on. You mourn the tragedy that happened and you do your best to keep one foot in front of the other with Sans. A whole year has gone by according to your phone. Oh my goodness. You wake up with Sans curled into you. That is not strange. What is strange is a box floating in midair in front of you. What? You gently wake up Sans. The scarves and monster and I have spots of life as you stirring. What's up, babe? He mumbles half asleep. You point to the box in the air and ask if you can see it. See what? You explain there's a box to him. <laughs> he instantly sits up. What? You can reset. There's a button. There's a little asterisk next to it. What happens when you hover over it? You wave your hand over it. It says... Resetting transfer ownership. Previous owners, Frisk and Car of Leth. Does that mean what you think it means? You can reset? He asks Sam's days. You can save them. Reset it? He whispers. His voice broken. Please, for me. Lean down and press forward against him. You kiss his smile. You press reset. Oh my god! <gasps> Papyrus! I can see Papyrus' dialogue. Oh my god. You find yourself sitting at a kitchen table that you've come to know very well. 
It's the table you and Son sit at to eat. The kitchen looks the same, although it's much brighter than normal. Welcome, human! Loud agrees a tall skeleton. We stare up at him with wide eyes. Your eyes are glued to the unblemished red scarf draped over his shoulders. Papyrus? Yes, it is! The magnificent papyrus, he greets. I am here to congratulate you. Congratulate? Yes, you've succeeded where I failed, he says. You got Sans to pick up his socks. It takes you a moment to process this. You've gone out of your way to keep the home clean. Sans was little to no help in that regard. The best he could consider managing was to put the cigarette butts in the ashtray. Oh my god. You did not ask him for much else, given the state he lived in previously and what he'd come to know about him. You understood he generally does not care about the state of the home he's in. He could live in a dumpster without issue. That meant that you did all the housework. You cleaned, laundered and cooked for the two of you. It didn't bother you. It's the closest thing to a job you had, and without the level of consistency and routine, you would have not fared as well in the underground as you did. That being said, you did ask Sans to put his dirty clothes in the designated basket, and that was a uh, struggle. Um. Wait, is is this real? Um. So you could wash them. Okay, he said at the time. And he had not done it by the next day. You brought it up. I did, says Sans. You pointed out it in literally wearing the dirty jacket now. Yeah, I, I took it back out. He said, why? He smiled, stretched. <laughs> and leave it so you can wash it. Okay, he agrees. The next day, he's still wearing it. You ask him why. You didn't tell me when to... Oh my god, you little poop. <laughs> been a little menace. It's been a little menace. Mm. By your reaction, his eyes widen in sockets. <laughs> oh my god. Um, take them out to clean them. Come down. You sh sure thing, baby says, chuckling, whatever you want. You added this counter for all his dirty clothes. Sure, including the sock in the living room they kept putting back. Sans freezes that. His eyelids shrink before going back to normal. <laughs> okay. Was that what Papyrus was crouching you for? Yes, that is exactly. You had no idea how hard I tried to get him to pick up that damn sock, he said. <laughs> Not enthusiastically. You did it. You laugh. Yes, you did. It's the single most impressive thing I've ever witnessed someone other than me do, he says proudly. That is quite a feat, especially coming from Sansa's brother. <laughs> I'm glad you understand. Of course I knew you would. Papyrus beams. You love him as much as I do. You beam. Yes. He's a lazy bones, but he means well, he says. If he can choose to be kind over mean, he will. You nod. Not everyone understands that. Not everyone wants to, wants to I think. But that's okay. I do. You do. Papyrus reaches forward and a red glove on top of your head. And that's enough for me. I swear to God, if he turns out to be a freaking dream, I'm going to cry. He pats you. Thank you, he says. For the sock? <laughs> for the sock and for loving my brother. A black appears underneath your chair. You can only gasp and start to plummet. You're falling. Not a small fall. Okay, so wait, I'm back going in the underground? And then you land in the bed of sweet-smelling yellow flowers. Oh god, it's flowy. It's freaking flowy. What do you want, flowy? You got it up. Surprising you're okay. Not even hurt. You weave a hand in front of you, amazed at how unscathed you are from this fall. Wow. You start to walk through the ruins, impressed at how well lit they are now. The sunlight from the opening above you is astonishingly bright. 
Howdy! Oh Christ, Flower, what do you want? A yellow flower monster pops up from the ground in front of you. The monster smiles at you. Howdy, I'm Flowey. Flower the flower. Nice to meet you. Hello. Yeah, you seem to be nice to the underground, aren't you? Golly, you must be so confused. Someone ought to teach how things work around here. I guess little old me will have to do it. Oh, that's nice. Ready? You beam and nod. Here you go. There's a rush of something tingly that emerges from your chest. Warm blossoms out of you, pleasant and comforting. A white heart floats in front of your chest. See the heart? That is your soul. The very accumulation of your being. You are going to freaking attack me, you wretched little flower. Oh, your soul flows around at your will. You can move it slightly away from your body. How wonderful. You can't wait to show sounds when you see them again. Your soul starts off weak, but you can grow strong if you gain LV. What does LV sound for? Well, live a ghost. You frowned. Wait, LV? For love? Isn't that the terrible thing that can start a genocide? Why would Flower bring that up? You want some love, don't you? Wait, what? Down here, love is shared through white friendliness petals. That does not sound right at all. You tell the Flower you aren't interested in obtaining any love. Flower friends with you? Not as new to this as you let on, are you? Or the Flower monster's face morphs. That's fine. You'll die in this world. It's kill or be killed. Okay. That little shit of a flower. A fireball hits the flower monster, shooting him away. What a terrible creature tormented such a poor innocent soul, sighs another monster. Ah. Oh. oh my god, I'm, I'm having PTSD again, so shit. Okay. Toriel. Sans told you about her. I am Toria, the caretaker of the ruins, she says. She smiles at you. She's alive. You did it! You really did it! You really did it! Your eyes burn as tears slip out of you. Oh my dear, don't cry. It's all right now, she says, hurrying closer to you. Yes, yes it is. Come with me. Are you hungry? You hiccup a laugh, crying harder now. You nod as you wipe away at your eyes. You poor thing. Here, take my hand. She offers you her hand and you take it. She guides you through a cavern that's not at all dark. It is well lit, beautiful, and teeming with other monsters. Each monster you see makes your tears come faster. No ashes. Some giving you concerned looks, others ignore you. You don't care. They're alive. They're alive. Tori takes you to her home. Come in, she says. Her voice is kind and sweet. Her red eyes feel as gentle and as warm as a fireplace. You sunk as you step inside. It's pleasantly warm, and the house is filled with soft light. And once you feel at ease, your volatile emotion motion starts to settle down. Please take a seat, she says. I can whip you up something nice in just a little bit. You thank her. Your voice cracks. I'm happy too, she says brightly. She asks you into the recliner by the fireplace. Are you cold? Nor, she already has a blanket draped across your, lip, your lap. Be at ease, dear Twinkle, she says. I'll be back shortly. You sink into the chair. You're Wait, how the hell did she know my name? Wait, did she tell you your her name? You didn't tell her your name. You must have. Sounds said he was the only one who ever remembered the resets. The only one who ever met her in her dreams. Your entire existence to the fireplace cackle. She knows who I am. It doesn't take long for Toriel to come back to you. I finished baking a pie. Would you like some? You nod, excited to try her food. You graciously thank her, your voice cracking once again. She laughs slightly. Don't thank me yet, you haven't even tried it. You, she offers you her hand. You take it as you stand back. Her fur feels like velvet, delicate and fluffy. The monster gives your hand a careful squeeze and starts to guide you through the living room to your seat at the table. When seated, she brings a large pie and places it on the table. It's a golden ground pie. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> it's the same exact scene, only this time she's live. Ah. It smells heavenly, your stomach growls hungrily, you're starved. She carefully cuts you a slice and places it on the plate in front of you. Eat up, she said, you'll need to, to keep your strength up, my dear. You pick up your fork and neatly cut out the first piece. You take your first bite, immediately tasting the butterscotch. Oh my god, this time it's not going to be bittersweet, is it? 
It's warm, sweet, delicious, and there's no bitterness. Everything you could have ever wanted in a pie. You lick your plate clean. If you would like, dear human, says Tori, you may stay here. The underground can be a dangerous place for humans. You beam at that. As much as you like to, you need to meet with someone else first. Oh? Yes, someone very, very dear to you. Another monster. I see, she says. I can't keep you here. There are no children. There are no children. Will you be back? You promise you will. She smiles at you. Good. She walks through the exit of the ruins. Oh my god, am I going to see Sans? You are so used to the cold of Snowden that it doesn't phase you when you step out. You quickly walk through the snow, fully intend to reach Snowden within the next five minutes. You first cross the bridge right when you feel a familiar gaze on you. You stop. Human, don't you know how to greet a new pal? You turn around, turn around and shake my hand. That voice, you know it all as well as your own. You turn around, it sounds, except the light in his eye socks are pure white. Not a trace of blue or red can be found. And he's wearing pink fuzzy slippers instead of sneakers. You throw your arms around Sans and pull him into a hug, immediately crying all over again. Huh? What's wrong, Twinkle? Got dust in your eyes. You hiccup! That was an awful pun! Yeah, he agrees, continuing to pat your back. You squeeze him tightly and kiss the top of his head. There, there, babe, he says. No need to cry, I'm right here. You sniffle. You're right here. I'm right here and you're right here. He continues. Everyone is here. You're not alone. He bites his face into your neck. We're not alone, he whispers. Everything's okay now. Eventually your tears die down. They always do when he comforts you. He pulls away and wipes into your tears with his fluffy mittens. Better, he asks. You ask him if Papyrus is alive. Yep. Everyone? Everyone. You let a slow breath. You straighten up and slip your hand into his. You're better now? Good. Are you ready? For what? Everything, he says. As long as he's with you. He tightens his grip around your hand, his eye lights brightening. As long as you'll have me. Happy ending. True pacifist. Sans is romanced. Wait! He, that's why he, he wouldn't accept us while he was like as he was. So he's gone back to being as he is. He's gone back to being the original Sans now. Oh wait, I got the true pacifist on the first run through. Oh my god. I successfully won over his skilly. I restored him to happiness. Oh, this freaking at you. <sighs> But yeah, that's the end. That that's it, folks. That that is it. We got to. Oh, his eye went back to white. Oh, that's clever. Oh God, is that it? Is it over? Congratulations! You got the hardest end in the game. Way to go, you! Thank you very much for playing this game all the way through. If you are interested in more Undertale U games, I do have a complete Undertale game and Mafia Tale is in progress. Unlike Death Tale, they have a lot more routes. <laughs> Thank you for playing any games. Any future one with bonus rights or add additional dialogue. Uh, although in honour of obtaining the hardest ending in this, enjoy this optional bonus scene if you like. Meet Papyrus again? Okay, what's this? You and Sans discuss what to do next. It's been a long time since Sans experienced a pacifist timeline. It takes him a few minutes to remember what you have to do. It'll be hard, he warns. That's okay, you can handle it. Are you sure? Yep, yeah, besides. Sans! A loud voice booms down the path to Snowden. Hey, bro, says Sans. Sans, give me back my scarf. I need it for it. My, oh, is that a human? Sans shrieks. Papaya shrieks as he stomps down the path. He immediately stops as soon as he spots you. Yeah. Says Hans, I'm dating her. Yep. Yeah, you yeah, what? Says Papyrus, looking scandalous. I, I did not know how I feel about this. That's cool, says Sans. To be honest, I figured you wouldn't be on board right away. That is a lazy pun. Papyrus <laughs> glowers. How could you cohoot with a human? Cohoot? Treckles, Sans, she seduced me. You can't disagree with that. 
I will not accept it, human. I challenge you to test your wits and resolve. You accept. Good. <laughs> Papyrus gulps <laughs> off. You need any help? Sans asks you. Nope, you can handle this on your own. You bend down to kiss your boyfriend. Independent and self efficient are the two hottest traits in a woman, says Sans <laughs> appreciatively. Yep, you can call your previous meeting Papyrus. Just one thing. Anything he says. He has to pick up his sock. <laughs> Sans still said that. His eyelids move to the side as he potentially looks away from you. Ugh. You warn him that if those socks aren't picked up by the time you reach Snowden, you will never get his... <laughs> he will never get his real little... <laughs> on you again. <laughs> you raise an eyebrow. He said anything. Okay, babe, he says. You win. That's right, you do. You see your boyfriend again near the wishing cave. Papyrus is a delight. He, you already love him. After playing with his puzzles and fighting him, you won the right to date Sans. And then when you found out that you were the reason behind Sans picking up his socks, he decided that marriage was now on the table. You just have to go through a marriage interview with him, which you'll get to later. Right now, you have to deal with Ndai, a monster you hadn't met before but heard a lot about. You merely wake your way down the caverns that you know so well. You cheerfully encounter and spare every monster you meet. You get to the wishing caves and you spot your boyfriend near the wall by the telescope. You move over to greet him. Hey, babe. He says, how's it going? Swell. Did you have fun with Pops? Yep. We'll do a marriage interview with him later. Huh? Sans tilts his head. Uh, okay. What's the... What's he up to? I found my old telescope, he said. Was thinking about getting into the telescoping business once you break the barrier. You'll normally be like something primary telescopes, he winks at you. But for you, I'll hardly let you use it for free. Oh no, is he about to put a thing on my goddamn thing? Ah, uh, he's gonna put paint on me. You sure I can use the telescope? You see nothing but red. Did he paint over it? You pull away. What's wrong, babe? Not a good view. You closely examine the telescope and part of the red paint at the end of it. Guess I'll have to clean it up, huh? His grin stretching. He looks too happy to have cleaned something. What did he do? Me? Nothing. Not a silt zippo. What did he do then? Uh, I didn't do nothing. Duh. You reach out to catch your eye. As you look out, as you look out of the telescope, your fingers come back, sleek with paint. You call him a meanie as he beams. He. <laughs> You don't see Sans again until Hotland. What's up, babe? Sans greets you at the sentry post in Hotland. You're happy to greet your boyfriend. Want a dog? He asks. You already adopted all the dogs in Snowden. N no, not what? You shrug. He smiles, stretches. How? When you went back to hang out with the pirates? For your marriage interview? For your marriage interview, yes. The dogs were waiting for you. They said they couldn't get your smell out of their mind and wanted you to stay with them. Hmm? What? Hmm. <laughs> His eyelids move off to the side. Oh, that's cute. He's pouting. He's really only one thing you can do in this situation to cheer him up. You scoop him up in charms and proceed to kiss every part of his face. Sans starts to laugh as you do. Joy tingling in his voice. It was a warm laugh. A smooth laugh. A laugh filled with genuine delight. After all, this laugh should be, and will be, so long as you are around. That's all for the bonus scenes for now. I might add more later. <sighs> that was adorable! <sighs> I love that. I love that. That was beautiful. I felt so emotionally attached and invested throughout that. And I'm so happy to see Dustail getting, like... A happy ending, a true happy ending where Sans can, you know, he doesn't have to deal with that bullshit anymore. That finally all the resetting is over, no more genocide. He can be happy again and then everybody comes back and Frisk and Car have gone off to somewhere. Oh. But yeah, that was it. That was. Uh, that's Taylor. It was posted three days ago and some of my first run through. I got a good ending. <laughs> I'm gonna go lay down now. Anyway, um, 
if you guys want to play this for yourself, there'll be a link down below. And saw so Petal 16. This was amazing. I absolutely love it. I'm already enjoying Underfell if traversing through that. And this game would be amazing. If you guys want to check out any, any of Dark Pedal 16's games or anything at all they're working on, there'll be a link down below. Go and check them out. Seriously, just go and check out their, their page. These games are really good. I'm I'm really thoroughly impressed and really enjoying so far. I'm excited to see what else you have in store and what else is going to happen with the games that you're doing. Um, so yeah. Gosh. I really love that bonus scene. That was so freaking cute. <laughs>